What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Strictly Casual, your unoriginal podcast from unprofessional college students. Today is June 5th, 2020, coming at you for episode 18. 1 8, baby. 1 8. We have seven items on the docket for you, in which they are all a surprise. Um, and yeah. also, we have discussion questions at the very end for you. Yep. Um, if you from have our already, lovely gonna, community. From our lovely community. I'm going to plug the socials at the beginning. We got our Discord right there in the description. Um, we got Instagram. We got Twitter. Is there anything else we got, Vin? We got Twitch, baby. We got Twitch. Yep. We got uh, it, follow our socials. individual Twitches. Uh, channel Twitch coming soon. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Without further ado, Finn, how you doing? I'm doing so good. Honestly, the weather has been brutally hot this last week. And today it's like 71 with a nice breeze and it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. So my mood has automatically gone up exponentially as the weather has Incredible. Gone. Perfect. Incredible. How are you, dude? Doing well. Good. Um, weather, I eat. It's been a little I... bit of gray skies going on. Okay, all right. But, you know, could be worse. It could mm-hmm. be worse. Uh, Vin, what have you been playing this week? Dude, more Uncharted 3 and wow. more Modern Warfare. Dude, we you know, actually ben. played games together last night. Mm-hmm. We we have not played games together in a while, but we ran some... We had a little COD tournament. Uh, it was a great fun. time. Cut some custom games great all night. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I was going... Speaking of Uncharted 3, mm-hmm. I was going through an IGM post in which they yeah. rated all of their... They went through all their reviews of their Naughty Dog games. Okay. Of which, out of all the Uncharted games, Uncharted 3 was the only one to receive a 10 from IGN. A full 10? A full 10. I did not know Uncharted 3 got a 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The only of the series. Man, I still still don't have a definitive answer to you whether I like 3 better than 2. It's okay. But we're going to get there. Eventually, I, it says I'm like 54% done with the story or whatever, so I still have act, like a ways to go, but um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right, baby. Let's just let's, right. let's rip it. Let's jump in, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, Valorant launched the free-to-play shooter from Riot Games. Mm-hmm. This comes from Austin Goslin of Polygon. All right, um, right before we jump into this, Sure. Let me tell you a little gripe I'm having with Riot Games right now. Okay, so tell me about let it. Let me take you all back to 2012, 2013. Vincent's playing uh, League of Legends on um, a, just an absolute potato of a MacBook Pro, okay? Now, he makes his Riot Games account with um, an old email that he no longer has to this day. And he uses the username Babashinga, of course, because it's course, just been that many years. Right. So now... Fast forward to 2020. I'm trying to log into my Riot account because I want to play Valorant. Now, I am stubborn and I won't just change my username to and make a new email because I just want Babashinga. And I know I have Babashinga on an old account, mm, but I can't find mm-hmm. the password and log in to recover the account. So all week, I've been going back with a service representative who's basically telling me, you don't have access to your old email. You can't get that old username. That username's dead now to you, basically. And so, major F, I'm probably going to be Babushinga 1 on uh, Valorant, which is very F. sad. It's not the same. Anyways, it's let's continue. Same. I just had to rant a little uh, bit. That's okay, Vin. I, I mourn for you. I mourn for Babushinga. It's a big F. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, Valorant released Tuesday and revealed what's changing from the game's beta on launch day. Along with the game's usual updates, including buffs and nerfs to a few agents, Riot also introduced Reyna, the game's newest character. Now, this is important to note because the originally the game released, uh, because it released earlier than expected, they mm-hmm. dropped one of the characters, right? releasing with 11 characters instead of the advertised 12. Mm-hmm. So it can be presumed that this character, Reyna, is that 12 character that they held back a little bit from. Um, Right. They also unveiled a new map called Ascent, a new game mode called Spike Rush. Vin, do you know anything about that game mode? I don't. I watched a little bit of streams yesterday on Valorant, but I'm not even sure 
what the difference is or like what they do differently than a regular game so all right i don't either go check it out yep <laughs> and in addition several quality of life life updates that should make the game better for everyone this patch is also the beginning of what Riot is calling Episode 1, Ignition. Episodes in Valorant are a little bit like seasons in other games like Fortnite. Each episode will include new features and new content that Riot hopes will feel like a big update to the game. This is just one of those things that makes it more of a game as a service right. type thing. Um, whether that's in... So instead of seasons, they're doing episodes. And, um, I mean, it's a free game, so they're just trying to monetize it a little bit at least. And these episodes are paid? Uh, yeah, they're, it's it's a battle pass just like Fortnite. Gotcha. Um, which, um, I would say I'm much more okay with a battle pass if it's a free game. Yes. To start with. with. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to Call of Duty in which you pay $60 and then they want you to pay... Okay. Yeah. I right. see. No, um, I'm not totally against that either if it's worthwhile content. And maybe that's months after the game came out, but COD started that battle pass right away. Right. You know, so... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, Vin, do you know the price on that? For the Battle Pass? It's 10. No, episode 1. It's 10? Yeah, it's 10 bucks. All right. Um, that's fairly standard. Yeah. One right. thing that is not in the game at launch is Valorant's ranked mode, so the competitive mode. Players who participated in the closed beta f- had several weeks to test out ranked play, but Riot is holding off on the full release. The ranked mode will be out sometime shortly after launch to give Riot time to make sure the servers are holding up well and that there are no glaring bugs. So you know what this means, James. All the hmm. sweats are playing in the casual lobbies. That's yep, it. So that means if you jump into a casual lobby, mm-hmm. you're going to get sweated on. Just get ready. Sweat on. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, time. I haven't played Valorant yet at all, but I'm very excited to. Finn, we're going to go through the fire together in Valorant. I'm I'm really excited. It looks... You're already, you're right already get really eye. sweaty? Dude, you already know. You already Great. know. Great. Hell Finn, yes. were you ever into Overwatch? Yeah, I mean, I was into it for a while, but I was never good at it. There was no... Mm. It was, at no point was I like, I feel like I'm better than the other team. I w- always felt like I was undermatched. Or, sorry, mm. overmatched by the other team. Is there any way that you would reconsider that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially... Also... Major announcement for the entire podcast. Vinny is joining PC Master Race as of this week. He's just waiting on his uh, GPU to come in. That's right. And then that is the last component he needs. My you have your operating, si- you have your operating system. Mm-hmm. You have yep. your operating system. So you're, yep. you're good. We're almost there. Real close. Almost there. It's very exciting. Great. It's very exciting, everybody. Um yeah, any other thoughts, Vin? Well, where were we going with Overwatch? Well, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Would you? Is there yeah. any way that you would reconsider due to a platform change? Reconsider playing Overwatch? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'd play Overwatch again for sure. I like that game a lot. Incredible. Yeah. That's all I needed to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's all good right. stuff. I like the team-based shooters a lot. I, yeah, I they're just, fun. I'm just not great at them. Like, I, I need to get better at them, that's all. Vin, I'll play yeah. this Play shit out of Overwatch with you if you Good. want. Okay, sweet. I'm down. I'm super Great. down. Incredible. All right, so uh, Sony delays the PS5 event. Now, this message comes straight from the official PlayStation Twitter account. Um, this is quoted. I'm bringing it straight from the actual Twitter account. Uh, we have decided to postpone the PlayStation 5 event scheduled for June 4th, which is yesterday as of recording. Um While we understand gamers worldwide are excited to see PS5 games, we do not feel that right now is the time for celebration. And for now, we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. End quote. Um, So they announced uh, this uh, event last Thursday Mm -hmm. for the following Thursday. Mm -hmm. And they canceled or they postponed the event uh, Tuesday, I believe. Um, Yeah, it was Tuesday. Uh, because of just all of the stuff in the world going on right now, there's basically they're saying there's more important um, matters at hand, which I totally understand. Mm-hmm. At first, I was like, I read this, I was like, this is kind of a bummer. At at first, at, my my initial thing was like, ah, uh, they 
we've already been waiting so long for PS5. We're gonna have to wait another week or a couple weeks for this stuff. Um, but I think overall this is the right choice, and we see we're about to see a lot of companies follow suit uh, with not necessarily what they're doing, but what everybody's doing uh, mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah, I agree with you, Ben. It's um, it is a bummer that we've been waiting for so long. But what's another week or two weeks or three weeks? Right. Yeah. Um, because this is more my my only fear with this is that Sony is doing this for the wrong reasons and that like it's the Nike commercial Colin Kaepernick where they know if they promote Black Lives Matter they know that they're um they're gonna be people who want to support that sure. company more and they do it for profit. That is my from devil's advocate in me. Right, right. Um but from but, the statement, um, it didn't seem like that at all. It, it feels no, more it respectful didn't. than that. But, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's someone thinking about exactly what you just said at the company. Sure. But I don't know if that's the overall intention. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. I want to hope that they're better than that. You know what I mean? I, I want to also. But <laughs> yeah. Um, more power to them for supporting Black Lives Matter. Sure. Super yeah. huge. Um, um, so, I mean, I'm sure, suit. I'm sure we're going to get another something in the next week or two yeah sure um what was it there's another um I'll, I'll get to this later but there's another event that was moved to a later date and they actually set a date for it okay um so i'm wondering if that'll be indicative mm. of kind of a general window for yeah. uh the ps5 we'll be talking about that event a few articles down the line but yeah um, that's right yeah for now um, other companies are following suit, like Call of Duty. They delayed season four. This is also coming off their Twitter. Um, the statement says, while we all look forward to playing the new seasons of Modern Warfare, Warzone, and Call of Duty Mobile, now is not the time. I forgot about Call of Duty Mobile. <laughs> we are moving the launches of Modern Warfare season four and Call of Duty Mobile season seven to later dates. Right now, it's time for those speaking up for equality, justice, and change to be seen and heard. We stand alongside you. And then I'm just going to move on to the next one because oh. this is Infinity Ward. And But also, uh, last night there was an update while we were playing mm, um, mm -hmm, the game. Yeah. So now, <clears throat> before games and when you log in, um, there is uh, Black Lives Matter on the screen with basically the same thing here. Um, mm -hmm. Just that they're in full support of the movement and everything like that. So just Which a little addition. Cool. Yeah. And in addition to these statements, Infinity Ward is now taking extra precaution to ban racist and offensive names. Uh, this comes from Infinity Ward's Twitter rather than Call of Duty's. Um, statement says, there is no place for racist content in our game. This is an effort we began uh, with launch and we need to do a better job. We're issuing thousands of daily bans of racist and hate-oriented names. But we know we have to do more, and we are in a following list. Adding additional resources to monitor and ID racist content, adding additional in-game reporting systems to increase the number of bans by hour, adding filters and greater restrictions on name changes, evaluating in-game improvements to make it easier to report offenses, increasing permanent bans to root out repeat, repeat offenders, and lastly, they have an apology saying we apologize to our players, this is our commitment to you, our fans. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, these are all, this is all good stuff. Yeah, good on them. Yeah. I mean, I already know they do quite a bit to ban, mm -hmm. like, a lot of stuff. So saying that they're even going to go further and really try to make it, um, I don't know, in, uh, a bigger goal for them to weed out this mm -hmm. kind of stuff, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, I don't have any further comments. I think yeah, it's great. Yeah, either. Um, and then this next one's a little a little shorter, but Cyberpunk 2077 event moved to June 25th. Um, and this is the Night City Wire, right? Right, James? Right. This was supposed to be June 11th, if I recall right. correctly. So this is from Cyberpunk's Twitter. Uh, we decided to move Night City Wire to June 25th. We still look forward uh, to sharing new information about Cyberpunk 2077, but more important discussions are happening right now, and we want them to be heard. We wholeheartedly stand against racism, intolerance, and violence. Black Lives Matter. Great. So, it was our, 
sorry, it was originally on the 11th, you said? I believe so. I Which is be next week. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And that's, okay. uh, what, 11th to the 25th? That's, uh, about a week and a half difference? So... Two week. Let me ask you this, then. Do you think Sony's PS5 event will be next week, or do you think it's going to be pushed out maybe two weeks instead? Because I have a feeling they really... Like, this date was important for them, mm-hmm. but then for the better judgment of what's happening, they had to mm-hmm. move it. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't see um, them waiting another couple weeks for it. I, I feel like it's just going to be, like, maybe a week. I That's the hope. Yeah. But because they didn't issue any sort of time frame, that's what right. makes me a little more skeptical um, and refrains me from saying it would be like next week or the week sure. after. And we um, would have gotten about a week in advance, right? Usually? Yeah. I mean, actually, the Last of Us thing was only like a couple days in advance. Yeah. Yeah. But, but this is a console thing, so I'm sure it has a week in advance. Right. So, um, honestly, I it would be hard for me to speculate. Yeah, me too. Um, also, I, I don't think it's fair or I don't think it's necessarily... Um, good judgment to base Sony's window off of Cyberpunk 2077 because right, Cyberpunk yeah, yeah. isn't affiliated with Sony. Sure. Um, that is, a m- it appears on Microsoft's stage. So, yeah. um, I guess it was more, uh, that was less of like, um, the game side of it and more of, sure. Like, I think Cyberpunk's trying to have this thing after, I guess I oh, don't really sure. know, you know. I don't really sure. know the best way to describe that or explain that. Well, but. they also had their date, original date in place before Sony had theirs. Yep. They did. So um I Yeah, don't know. We'll I don't see. know. We'll see. I uh, I'm not going to try and guess around too much. Yep. Me neither. Um, just keep expectations low. Mhm. Um All right. Uh this one's kind of out of nowhere, but there's yeah. a patent filed for uh, Sega uh, patenting touchscreen controls. This comes from Gaming Route. Back at you, it with the patents. How can you patent touchscreen stuff now? I don't. I don't understand it. Ben. I feel like I really don't. I feel like it's been done. Like touchscreen's out there now. Um, all that. It literally this. I can read. I'll read you the patent, but then yeah, I'll just good. sum it up and literally. 10 words <laughs> a controller that generates a game image of an object disposed of in a virtual gaming space and also the editing whoever edited this patent did not have very good grammar oh, and a yeah. touch panel connected to the controller and that co- or a uh, colon displays <laughs> the game image detects an input of a user's touch operation on the game image and outputs to the controller a detection signal indicating the detection of the input wherein the controller determines a contact surface area at an indicated position on the touch panel indicated by the user's touch operation based on the detection signal. This is all just a bunch of jargon for a touch screen that's interactive. So a touch screen. That's all it is. Yeah. And this could be, like, uh, Gaming Route speculates to say it could be a handheld console, or it could just be um, Sega entering the streaming industry with maybe a streaming service. Mm. Or it could maybe just be a mobile port of a pre-existing game. Like Sonic. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I can't think of a single thing Sega has done in the last couple years. Besides, like, maybe a Sonic game or, like... I, like, the list is not expansive. It's just Sonic. What else... Oh my god, like, yeah, I can't think of much besides Sonic at all. I'm trying to find something. Because they were in the news a lot for the Sonic movie. Football Manager 2020. Mm, a real... Oh, Persona 5. Oh, there you go. I did not know they were involved hey, in Persona Hey, Persona 5-based game is $8 right now on PlayStation Store with Plus, and then Persona 5 Royale is 45 James, here's my problem. Everybody tells me it's one of the it's like one of the best games ever made, right? Yeah. And I look at the trailer, and I'm like, oh, some of this looks cool. And then I keep watching it. I'm like, eh, like I don't I don't know I don't get it. But simply because like of its 
ridiculously high ratings and it's street cred, I feel like I need to play it. And I probably Same, will. But I probably will enjoy it. It just doesn't look. It doesn't grab me at all. It. I read a Polygon <laughs> article about their summer backlog games that they're returning to, mm-hmm. and one of them is Persona Five. And they said that you need to like have a whole different lifestyle around playing Persona Five because Dear it just Lord. takes that much time. It's like a hundred hours. It's. God. insane it's one of those it's one of those games you yeah. know like those witcher 3 like oh it's incredible but you have the to Assassin's just Creed dump Odyssey. yeah exactly the never-ending game it's the never-ending game um i mean i'm definitely it's interested well it's i am not, too it's not on the top i would love list, to play it means mm-hmm. hey for eight bucks it could be at the top of my list see eight bucks for the original oh god Sega, again, is also making a Gaming Gear Micro. So this is the next installment of the mini console iterations. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Sega is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year with yet another retro console. And it looks like it might be the tiniest yet. The Gaming Gear Micro is a revival of Sega's 8-bit handheld system that tried and failed to overcome Nintendo's Game Boy. Uh, That's a quote from Sam Byford at The Verge. It will be released in Japan on October 6th for 4,980 yen, or about $50. This article had no indication of a U.S. release, um, but Mm -hmm. we'll see. Um, I'm trying to imagine what the original handheld sega console looks like or what their first rendition of it is um i'm Googling. i don't know i was game boy gang yeah oh yeah me too i'm game trying boy to see a picture baby. oh yep nope after i see a picture i totally know what this is mm-hmm. now never played it but never played with it but it's very familiar okay that's all, that's all i saw a there. lot of um a lot of tweets saying like mm-hmm. oh just like got my got my uh gaming gear micro and it's the little like the McTo- mcdonald's yep. toys that you'd mm-hmm. get in your happy meal <laughs> of little oh, sonic little games mm-hmm. yeah oh dude those are great i totally remember those mm-hmm. i totally remember mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. they um, always vaguely smell like french fries i yeah they're stained with the grease of the french fries in the bag yep Mm-hmm. Okay, real quick. Have you heard of the Playdate mobile? It's like supposed to be a um, black and white uh, Game Boy looking thing, it's, uh, but like in 2020. Or I think it's called the Playdate. Oh, yeah, Playdate. Here it is. There's a lot um, of buzz on that thing right now. Um, re- oh my god. Oh, it's crank powered. It's. Is it? Yes, you crank a thing. Oh, mm. I'm like, sorry, audio. Yeah, um, I was wondering what that crank was. But I've heard, like, that's been, not Kickstarter, but crowdfunded for a long time. And they just got, like, um, some, not review copies, but, uh, like, whatever the top tier was, they got their Playdate mobiles already. Um, but it looks interesting. I, I think it's a cool concept, but I think the Switch is kind of like the go-to handheld but this is way smaller this is like pocket size this is well the main audience for this it looks like is nostalgia right totally but or nostalgic gamers can you load games onto that i don't know i, I don't really know i assume you'd be able to i think it's some sort of just them. emulator yeah hmm. but people are stoked there's different colors you can buy you can kind of customize what it looks like um, I like a lot of tech YouTubers and tech Twitter people are like tweet about it constantly. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I gotta do. Well, some more that's something for me to that keep guy. my eye on. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. This is interesting. Now, I have. This is something I don't know a lot about. Just that I know a lot of people are excited about. So I feel like I we would be dismayed not talking about it so kingdoms of how do we say this 
Alamar. Amular. Amular. You Kingdoms of Amular Reckoning is getting remastered in August this year. This comes from Stuart Thomas at Game Debate. Um, back in 2012, there was a slightly ambitious but also rather quite good RPG called Kings of, Kingdoms of Amular Reckoning. It oh, had a bit of dra- Amalur. 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 Yeah. I had King- always read it Amular, but I now see that the A and the U are yeah. switched. Kingdom of, Kingdoms of Amalur. Hmm. Uh, it had a bit of Dragon Age Origins mixed with Fable vibe. Vin's note. Uh, this game was highly praised for its gameplay and combat system. The now, combat was fucking dope. Really? Yeah, oh, it man. was so sick. So, uh, Kingdoms of Alamar Re-Reckoning will remaster the original game's graphics, include refined gameplay, and will reportedly release on August 11th, 2020. The remaster will include all the game's DLC in one package. Nearly two years ago, THQ Nordic had bought the rights to Kingdoms of Alamar Reckoning franchise, suggesting a sequel's on the table, but it looks like they will be delivering a remaster of the original game first. Wait, didn't THQ go out of business? Right, that's why That's why I was a little shaky. But I don't think they're out of business because they're doing, like, the Spongebob oh, game no. remastering THQ stuff. Nordic is fine. THQ, sorry, it was another studio that I thought. Okay. No, no, no. THQ Nordic is doing just fine. Um, okay, Vin. So let yeah. me... I... Take me back. Very, very vividly remember... Mm-hmm. Um, very, very vividly remember the specifically the intro section to kingdoms of amala reckoning okay mm-hmm. in which you go through this whole like you start in like this like cave where there's like goblins mining and stuff like that or whatever and then you okay. kind of break out and i remember this game was so dope but i was so indecisive that i had to keep restarting the game to try out the different classes <laughs> because there's just so much variety that I could mm-hmm. not make up my mind for which character I wanted to play. There's like these ring you know what a chakram is? It's mm-hmm. like a it's like if you it's like if you took a sword and okay. you just bent it into a circle. Okay. You know, and it has yeah. the edge. So you like so you can throw it like a uh-huh. like a boomerang and it's like a huh. it's like a frisbee. You okay. know those ring frisbees? Yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Oh, and dude, you full with, caliber. I used so, to play with those weapons all the time. So dope, dude. Yeah. Um, you had, like, magic, and then you had this... It had this whole thing about, like, fate, and so you would, like, try and... Um, you could, like... It was, like, an ultimate, like, ability where you had this like fate meter or something like that i very vaguely remember that Mm -hmm. um but there was also like a lot of uh dialogue choices and like decision making um yeah but so it was dope i only had seen the poster when i saw the 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 re-reckoning or that's what they're calling it um so i looked up gameplay and like reviews of when it came out in 2012 um and i could see like in 2012 I was like, okay, that looks pretty cool. Like, from the time it came out, I guess, right? But you're looking mm-hmm. at it now, it's totally chunky and everything. But, um, yeah. I don't know, a remaster of that would be pretty cool. Oh, I'd, I'd be interested dude, in playing I can't it. Wait. And I must, dude, or any RPG, I love it. I get sucked in so fast. And so, if this is a great one that's getting remastered that I haven't played yet, I'm in. I'm in. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Um, cool. Yeah. Finn, you gotta take this next one. This is all okay. you, dog. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Destiny 2 DLC reveal coming June 9th. This comes from Phil Hornshaw at GameSpot. Um, all right. The first official look at Destiny 2's next content season, season 11, is here. 11 seasons in Destiny 2. Holy crap. Uh, with Bungie <sighs> announcing more details with a reveal next week. The developer shared a teaser trailer on Twitter that gives some new hints about where Destiny 2's story is headed, while also confirming that a reveal livestream will take place next week. Uh, the reveal is set for 9am Pacific Time, 12pm Eastern Time on June 9th. 
although we don't know yet what it'll cover. The timing is significant, though Destiny 2's next content season kicks off the same day at 10 a.m. PT and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We've gotten almost no details about what is set to happen in it, outside some changes to gear systems Bungie has talked about in past blogs. So you're telling me, this they're dropping what the con what the actual season will be, and then one hour later that season launches. That's dope. I love it. Nobody has any idea what it's gonna be. That's That's sick. Okay. Uh, Bungie has also suggested that the reveal could go beyond season eleven to discuss bigger things on the horizon. (laughs) namely the start of Destiny 2's fourth year. The teaser itself also includes some interesting hints at the future. It it features the Drifter, the character that runs Destiny 2's Gambit activity, taking a ship towards what looks like to be Jupiter's moon of Europa. Or Europa, Europa, yeah. Europa, you got it. Cool. That's a place many players have believed would soon become a new in-game location, and the new teaser adds some credits to that theater theory. Um, So... Uh, this is my little note. I, I would guess that Bungie reveals the next gen plans for Destiny 2 as well. They already said it was going to be supported on next gen, so I hope they detail what exactly that means. Um, and then I imagine if there's faster load times on Destiny 2, I might actually be in again. Because <laughs> that's a big yeah. deterrence. Um, so, all right. All right. Quick, we're summarizing this real quick. Season okay. 10 is ending soon. Season 11 gets revealed on June 9th, and Season 11 also gets released on June 9th. Um, And we Mm. don't really know what that is. Very exciting. There's going to be gear changes, which I know Do you know what that might entail? I don't know exactly what that entails because I've been kind of like out of the Destiny game, out of the blog posts and stuff. Um, uh, So I definitely got to do some research about that. Uh, So I'm in. I'm in. Whatever it is. And then, okay. Cool. Let's say Destiny 2 is... Okay, we already know it's going to be on next gen. If it comes to next... Will you play it on next gen again? Will you try it on next gen? Just to see how it looks and to see if it's I'll faster. Try it. I'll try it on next gen. Okay. Because I really want to try it on next gen. But I'll I need try to it. play with James. I can't... Yeah. Destiny 2 alone is a lonely, lonely journey. It is. It, it really is. is. Uh, God, I'm still working on that Unbroken. I was so close, but so far. So far. I want to do raids, Vin. That's the thing. I love the raids, but yeah. you have to be so committed to it was, the game It's impossible to, to get to the raids. But they make it really hard to get there. Yeah. And I'm fine if they're hard, but like you have to put in 50 hours just to level your character each season just to play the raid. Yeah. But the raid gear is so cool. It really is. I'm honestly... I wish they would have cut this game. Just cut Destiny after this last season. Maybe give it... Mm-hmm. Um, just trickle out some more quality of life improvements over time. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe make some super far in end goals that'll take you 100 hours to complete. Just so people have stuff to grind for. And start grinding away on Destiny 3. Because... They, Bungie ha- really has something with Destiny, regardless of like all the flaws that it has, because it has some major flaws. They really have something solid, and I would hate to see it just get thrown into Destiny 2, which people have already kind of whisked away. Mm-hmm. Like, give us a whole new thing with all the improvements that you want to do, instead of trying to change Destiny 2 too much. Because you've already lost a lot of people on it. Yeah, they lost me. It's sad. It's F's yeah. all around. Well, I think that it just, it really, like, they leaned into the division between MMO and just, an, like, MMORPG and mm-hmm. RPG. Yeah. And so that was where they lost me is because I'm not a huge, I don't really care for MMOs, mm-hmm. but I love RPGs. And so it's, like, everything that's MMO about the game, I don't really like, but everything that's mm-hmm. RPG, I do really like. Right. I like the MMO side, but I agree, not having, like having no voice for your character makes automatically makes you feel like you aren't really your character Mm -hmm. stuff like that there's little things like that um obviously that wouldn't fix everything but it's not i see what you mean where it's not even rpg enough to to draw you in like that like other ones would. right right that's all i got on d2 
That's but all I, I got. I'm very excited to cover this again next week to see what uh, what this is all looking like. And I'm excited to see what happens. I'm just I just yeah. don't have an interest in playing it. The CG trailer is dope, by the way. Actually, before I move yeah, on, there's, all of them are dope. Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple. The first one is the drifter flying on a ship, like with some hood on. He has like some fireball in his hand that's looking super sick. Um, and then the next one's uh, Eris Morn, maybe trudging through the snow. I don't know who it was. I forget. Mm. I, um, and then I sent you one this morning of Rasputin, mm, and yep. it said like Rasputin is at full power, something like that. Awesome. And I was it's like, dang, awesome. that's dope. Um, you know what mm-hmm. else is dope? What? Minecraft Dungeons. And it launched this week, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah. May 29th, 2020. Um, it's getting overall positive reviews. Nothing incredible. Right. Um, but IGN, 7 out of 10. Game Informer, 7 out of 10. Windows Central, 4.5 out of 5. That's high. Yeah, Destructoid, that, that's a high one. Uh, 8 out of 10. Uh, the game is basically just Diablo but minecraft and it looks pretty dang cool <laughs> and it's 25 bucks unless you have xbox game pass then it's free that's right um, that's it i will 100 percent be playing minecraft dungeons oh, there's no man. question there's no doubt in my mind there's no question about it <laughs> i i can't wait holy crap i probably won't be playing this James, we gotta we gotta do it together, bro. It's gonna be All so right, much fine. fun. Right, it's gonna fine, be so fine, much fine. fun. Great. I've watched some gameplay and stuff, and it looks pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm, it's Minecraft, man. I'm all in. All right, all right. Um, great. On to random uh, fun stuff, baby. I have a feeling that Minecraft Dungeons can be pretty forgot, like forgettable. Like I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of cool for like maybe a month. And then I've already two years forgotten from about now, it, Vin. Yeah, two years from now, people are going to be like, what, what's Minecraft Dungeons? What's that? Yeah. It's like the Minecraft story mode that everyone forgot about. F. Well, also Telltale ran out of business, and they didn't really get to finish that, I don't think. True. That's can I get an F for Telltale? What a great studio. It's honestly, it's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. <sighs> you remember watching telltale uh playthroughs on freaking pewdiepie dude he did the walking dead i watched Mm -hmm. part of it and then i was like no more i have to play and so i had it on steam on my 2011 mac and i played Mm -hmm. it and it was so glitchy that like sometimes i just wouldn't hear the words what's going on Mm -hmm. i'd have to go to youtube and watch the scene (laughs) (laughs) yeah great times and my mouse would glitch out and so I'd click the wrong decision, something I didn't oh, want to make, no. and I would just mess up the storylines for my characters, and I gave up. I finished the first season, <laughs> but like after that, I was like, I literally cannot play this game anymore. I It, it was so <laughs> maddening. Okay, that's all. <laughs> that's great, man. Yeah. All right, so one of the favorite part of the podcast, random fun stuff, in which it's Slim Pickens. It is. You got two items. Slim Pickens. Oh, <laughs> fun stuff this week. <laughs> Not a lot of random or fun stuff happening this week. Hey, we got one really fun thing. Sure. All right, which one do you want to say, James? <laughs> I want the second one. All right, I'll take the first one. The Witcher 3 hits 50 million copies sold. This that game just keeps shitload, selling. A shitload of copies. This, it just keeps selling. People yeah. cannot get enough of Witcher 3. Nope. I, it's great. I have, still haven't played it. I don't know if I will. Uh, I would awesome. like to. It's just a big commitment, yeah. and everyone knows that. Ask my ex girlfriends. Not a big commitment guy. <laughs> <laughs> and clipped, <laughs> and Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, strictly casual. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> just kidding. Sea of Thieves is now on Steam. Um, what used to be exclusive to the Microsoft platform is now released on Steam. Yep. Finn, I know the two of us are going to be playing this Game Pass, baby. Xbox Game Pass on our Ooh. PCs. Ooh. Boom. I'm excited um, to play it because, I mean, to be honest, every time there's an Xbox exclusive, I try not to get super excited about it because I know I can't play it. But now that it's on PC, now, Xbox Game Pass, I can now get excited to play it. Mm-hmm. We're going to be playing Halo. 
Oh my god. Some Sea of Thieves. We're gonna be playing some No Man's Sky when that comes out this month. It's just a world of adventure waiting for me. A world of adventure. And Outer Worlds is on Game Pass. I cannot wait to play play Outer Worlds. That one is real. I'm actually really excited about. Great. Everybody, we haven't been doing this for a while, but we decided to revive it because this week's news was a little light. So this week, we went to you, the community. Mm -hmm. to pick up some discussion questions first of all comes from mr aylwood saying mr ollywood baby sorry ollywood (laughs) mispronounced it if you had to create a sequel for an already developed video game franchise what would it be and what would it be about so i guess okay basically we need to pitch like you pitch me a sequel to a game with a story on it and then i'm gonna pitch you a game sequel with a story attached to it this is this is very difficult for me okay oh i got it okay do you remember the game for playstation 2 called ultimate spider-man yeah absolutely ultimate spider-man 2 the long-awaited sequel Mm -hmm. to the first game in which peter parker is dead right and venom killed him okay and so now you play as venom mourning the death of peter parker and it leads to internal conflict because venom thought that killing peter parker would make venom happy however Hmm. venom's conflicted he has inner turmoil right And ultimately, it's the redemption story of Venom turning him into anti-Venom or Age of Venom. This sounds intense. I completely came up with that on the spot because Mm -hmm. I was originally going to say Jack 4, an open world Jack 4. However, I didn't actually, I've never finished a Jack and Daxter game, so I wouldn't know what to say it's about. Nor did I really finish Ultimate Spider-Man. <clears throat> it's just I just thought, know, you know a little. It's just the thought. Yeah. And I know that the story isn't really like canon. Okay. But it sounded cool to me. Right. That sounds cool to me too. What now, do you got, Ben? All right. I've been thinking about this one. I. I want to do Force Unleashed three. Okay. This wow. is this is big. This is a very influential franchise for Vincent. Unfortunately, uh, reviews did not do it justice because it's a masterpiece. Both of them, Force at least one and two masterpieces. They're amazing. Ten out of ten games. Even even though IGN wow. gave Force Unleashed two a four out of ten, might have been their biggest blight. Might have been the company's biggest blight. Um, <laughs> wow. Anyways, okay. Remind me this. Does Starkiller die in number two? I never finished it, Ben. Okay. Assuming Starkiller doesn't die in number I don't two finish because games. it is forgettable. Damn it, James. Everyone gotta knows this. Games. <laughs> I don't like commitment. Okay. So, the Force Unleashed series is about Starkiller as um, a Darth Vader's secret apprentice, apprentice who is cloned and all this stuff. So, either right. you play a Starkiller or a clone of Starkiller. It doesn't really matter. Who cares? Anyways... You are figuring out um, uh, Darth Vader's past in this Force Unleashed Three. Okay, you're you want to know who he is, so you go on a mission throughout the galaxy to find old uh, Anakin, uh, accom- like uh, uh, accomplices, like Obi Wan. You search. You're wow. searching the galaxy for Obi Wan Kenobi. And you visit all these prequel characters, and you get in these battles and everything, all the while Darth Vader's trying to destroy you before he gets to anything of his past. Epic. There's Force Unleashed 3. PS5. I can't wait. Epic. That was actually a great question. Thank you, Mr. That was a great question. Thank you, Mr. Hollywood. Yep. This comes from... How do you pronounce this username? Music is me. Oh. That's more apparent now that you said it this one comes from music is me 376 
Do you think Nintendo should make a Mario Kart 9 for the Switch or stick with the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is just ported over from the Wii U? Do you want, I, I, here's the thing. Here's, here's my thoughts on this. Yeah. I, it seems kind of like a cop-out that, uh, it was just ported onto the Switch without anything, just the full version. Uh And I feel like they could get away with doing another Mario Kart Kart game, uh, like a Mario Kart 9. But they've marketed the Switch with, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe from the very beginning, and they still have bundles with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. To be yep. honest, I think that's the only Mario Kart game we're seeing this generation, yep. like, throughout the Switch. Um, I agree. But, honestly, I really hope that um, there's a, like, update with more maps and characters and stuff. Because I feel like that would be a fun thing. Because right now it's the same. It's the same as it's been since day one. There's been no changes. And I also know that that's not really a, a games of service kind of game at all. But... It'd be cool to see some sort of update that's going to draw more people in and make it worthwhile jumping back in. Because right now, to me, Mario Kart is like when you're hanging out with friends. It's it's Smash or Mario Kart or something. I never like right. pick it up on my own to play it ever. Yeah, I agree. I'm the same way. Yeah. Cool. I I, I have nothing to add. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we're gonna see a Mario Kart Nine. Should they make a Mario Kart Nine? Maybe, but I don't think they need to because of how well Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sells, and yeah. you know it's already bundled with console and stuff. Hey, anyway, we'll see it on the Switch too. We'll see it <laughs> on the Switch too. I agree. Yeah. Um, Braxton two five three writes in. Sorry, were you gonna take this no, one? No. I apologize. No, you go. You go. Braxton two five three asks, "What games that are out right now would you want to see done in VR?" Right off you the start, bat. Yeah. Right off the bat, I got Bloodborne, in which you oh, actually God. are forced to roll around your living room, smashing into furniture, <laughs> um, you, and oh any God. damage that you take from your running into your couch or kitchen table actually mm-hmm. reflects in game. Yeah. Um, right. It's I it's do. a lot of rolling. It's a lot of rolling. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That would be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, you put on the, the headset. And you just you're literally, like, just roll in every direction, try to get away from yep. that. That would be hilarious. Before you know it, the cable attached to your PlayStation Four, yeah, mm-hmm. is wrapped around your entire bo- entire body. You're coiled yep. up. You can't do anything. You're incapacitated, you're yep. and then you die because you can't roll anymore. It's Bloodborne IRL. It's Bloodborne IRL. It, in the game, it's some creature versus demons and in real life it's man versus cable and we know who wins cable every time baby cable every single damn time Um, (laughs) i don't know this is a i I feel like i need to play more vr and then when i play more vr i'd be like oh crap this game would be so good in here but i guess like right off the bat i'd love to see a like stealth not metal gear solid but like a splinter cell or some sort of like stealth That'd first person shooter um mm-hmm. with good controls because i'm sure there is a stealth first person shooter on vr right now um but i don't know i'd l- like a full night vision goggle type dealio uh could be super sick okay i have a serious idea that i think would be really cool okay yep you play a bartender mm-hmm. and so you mix drinks and you serve people drinks yeah. Um, but that is not the focus of the game. You may might may be a bartender and you uh-huh. it, it is your job to like sure. look up like how to make drinks and like shake them or stir them or whatever. I mm-hmm. think that'd be really fun. However, yeah. there is a story that is being told in which is a result of the people who come up to the bar and the mm. people who you know, because people just talk to the bartender because yeah. they're lonely or whatever. Right, right. And so um, the story is um, portrayed or done through these characters who come hmm. up and they interact with each other and they interact with you. Yeah. And um, dude, wait, know, that's a really that good really idea. Fun. Can you yeah. like imagine? There's like multiple storylines through different nights that you work or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then like you're you're talking and there's about to be like 
a big like mafia deal behind the bar tonight you know what i mean and yeah. like you're figuring out all this information while serving drinks and everything like that dude that'd be sick mm-hmm. that'd be hey, super cool i thought of it if anyone else comes up with a uh bartending story-based game for vr uh you mm-hmm. owe me royalties yep. so trademark uh, give me my money cc no that was that's a good that's actually a really good idea i think it'd be cool but again that's not a game that is out right now so i guess it doesn't answer the question oh true oh that's right it's not just any uh game. destiny 2 <laughs> can you imagine i would throw up <laughs> five minutes in i'd be like oh Ugh. it's just so much going on at once i couldn't do it uh it's destiny 2 but you only play as cade 6 when he's dead so your cade 6 is a ghost coffin? spectating coffin simulator <laughs> <laughs> oh you just uh, play as the ghost oh so you just when someone needs you you click like x or whatever and you pop up and you say you need to go here and that's yep it. <laughs> and that's and it you, and then you're you black dialogue. screen dialogue options to be like like a really shitty quip and you're like you yep. have like three <laughs> quips to choose from you're like they're okay, all we're equally go shitty <laughs> yep that's oh great. my god that's a really good all one. right <laughs> that's that's it that's all the questions that's a wrap baby that's a wrap i thank you guys so much for watching episode 18 i'm sorry we were a little light on the news but that. We're really working with what we got this week. It's just the way it is sometimes. It really is the way it is sometimes. Um, I don't know. Close us out, James. I, I, I ain't got nothing else to say. We plugged our socials in the beginning of the video, but you know what? We're going to bookend it. Put the socials at the end as well. We got our Discord. We got our Instagram. We got our Twitter. We got our Twitch all down in the description below. Please join the Discord. Join in for some friendly discussion. Mm-hmm. Um post your questions we'll have them just like we did on this episode um thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe hit that notification bell we record and post every friday with potentially more to come in the future um i hope you had a great time yeah i've been your uh co-host james walmer and and i've been your co-host vincent desantis everybody have a great friday have a great weekend Stay safe out there. Stay safe out there. Black Lives Matter, baby.